Yeah, there was a need. It was inner city schools. There was eight of them. And it was uh, low performing, low income areas where they wanted to get more um, academics and enrichment to the kids. So um, through that, they also did um, summer programs, which we bring um, different kinds of opportunities to the kids and families. They uh, had uh, African dance, which they wouldn't have been exposed to probably ever. Um, ballet folklorico, storytelling. So we try to bring in a lot of extra hands-on activities for the kids. We bring in stuff for the family. So we have like five or six events every school year if, or more if we can. It brings arts and science and different family activities. We did a tile mural, kind of represents the bosque. There was a fire in the bosque, so we did a mural to kind of tribute that. And then uh, another year we did a mural that just anything that the kids wanted in the mural. The Mr. Leo Romero's from the community, and he worked with the kids. So each of the kids had an input on what the mural has on it. One of the miracle workers had a tattoo, and his tattoo's up there. And then the kids liked fairies and dinosaurs, and then the cartoon characters, and the Twin Towers are up there. So it's a lot of symbols up there. So it's a really, and he worked with them, and they got to work on it. Um, the um, from kindergarten through fifth grade, and we had mentors that were middle schoolers, high schoolers, and uh, university kids, so everybody worked on it. There's a real, real uh, commitment on the community to keeping the program. They like what's been going on. They want to grow it. They want to add to it, mm -hmm. and they want to keep it. The history of the Sawmill Advisory Council is to they did a lot of um, organizing work in the 80s and early 90s in the in the Sawmill Wells Park community regarding environmental issues, um, and so they you know they really fought to get people to come into their community and clean it up. When they started to think about long term, how do we do this in the long term? How do we um, keep the community service type of mentality? They started to think about kids. So we, um, we've we developed different kind of programs, after school programs, environmental programs, different types of things for kids and um, with always that, that focus um, in service learning and giving back to your community and um, doing things for others. So what the kids typically do on a day-to-day -day basis is they will come in um, from their from their last class and sit down. They'll all gather in their groups, um, each grade level. So we have them separated in three different groups. So there's a kindergarten and first grade group. There's a second and third grade group. Then there's a fourth and fifth grade group. So each grade level um, has specific leaders that they work with. Um, and so then those leaders will take them out to the cafeteria to have snacks. Um, and the leaders give the snack and the kids kind of hang out, let loose for, um, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and, and eat and just kind of relax. So then after that, they'll get in line, um, go back to their classrooms that they were at, and that's the time that they'll do homework. Um, and each different leader helps those specific kids to, um, with any type of questions or homework help that they have. And then after homework time, they'll do activity. So after activity, they will go to, they will go out outside and they'll do just some physical, you know, getting releasing some energy because they've been in school all day. So um, they'll play outside and 
we try to ask the leaders to play with the kids and, and stay involved with the kids, um, even as they are outside. So it's we really want the leaders to lead them throughout, you know, throughout their day in academics, but also just kind of be able to be their mentors and um, and work with them even when they're outside and just being their friends and being somebody that they can confide in.